Hi friends, welcome, welcome to my live, my Facebook live session. It is Monday night here in uh, New York, United States. I want you to engage with me tonight, friends. I'm back in the office. I had a super long day at work and I left the office, went home, grabbed some dinner and came back so that I can meet with you. So I need you to chime in, chime in from wherever you are and show me some hearts, some thumbs up. Uh, if you can hear me, type in, I hear you, I'm with you. Uh, I'm back in the office, I'm alone here, uh, but I know that you're out there with me. So tonight, for the next 20 minutes or so, we are gonna cover a really important change in the immigration system. Super important change that um, it's actually not a great change. It is not a great change and it's gonna impact a lot of people. So I want you to share this video with your friends. Go ahead and tag it, share it, get it out there in front of your audience because guess what? There is a lot of immigration fraud out there. How many of you know that there is a ton of in misinformation out there, a lot of fraud? And so it, as you know, what I've been trying to do, I have been trying to put out free, smart information about immigration issues so that you guys can be empowered and so that you will not be scammed by anyone. So I want you to share this live session with your friends and your family because it is going down tonight, okay? And I understand that some people will be watching this um, on replay, and so this is for you as well. So join in this session, share it with your community, share it right now because I'm gonna share some smart information with you. Now, who am I? So I'm Latoya McBean, right? I am Miss Immigration, right? I'm lawyer lady. I'm whatever you want to call me, so long as it's good, something good. So for the past uh, maybe almost two years now, I've been putting out videos and some other stuff on Facebook and YouTube um, to teach people, to empower people about immigration laws and changes. And so I'm an immigrant myself. I am a naturalized citizen of the United States, okay? And so I've been through the journey. I, I've been through some stuff, friends. And as we get to know each other over the next, God knows how long, right? You're going to learn more about me. I've been through some things, and many of you have gone through some things. And so we have some shared experiences, right? And so I want to empower you, give you good information so that you will not be scammed by anyone. Okay, so I'm seeing some hearts. I'm seeing Gloria. Thank you, Gloria is listening. Tell me guys where you're listening from, where you're watching me from. Um, I'd love to know what country is joining me tonight. I'm in Brooklyn, Brooklyn. I love it here, love it, love it, love it. Okay, so let's get going. This is a super important night. We have a lot to cover and I'm super excited that you're with me again. Type in a question, type in where you're watching me from, uh, give me a shout out, give me a heart, give me, give me some sort of love, okay? I need it tonight because I'm back in the office for you, okay? So here, here we go. So guys, my mother said to me a few days, just actually a couple of days ago, she said, you know, Latoya, I watched your recent video on denaturalization. And she said, I'm so glad you put out that video on denaturalization because I've been getting all these other videos and information out there from people who um, are telling me that I'm going to be, you know, denaturalized. President Trump is going to strip my citizenship from me. And she said, I'm so glad you put out that video because I didn't really understand the issue. I didn't really get it. And so I'm so glad you did that. And friends, if you have not seen my video on denaturalization, I want you to go on my YouTube channel, McBean Law, um, and watch it because 
There's so much fraud out there. People are being confused. People are being scammed. People are being tricked. And I broke down that issue for you because you may not need to be fearful. I'm not fearful. My citizenship isn't going anywhere, okay? So share that video with your friends and family and share this video as well with other people. Okay, so let's get into it. I'm excited. I'm going to have fun tonight. I don't know about you, but I'm going to have fun. And I see that I'm joined by someone in Jamaica, Judicious. Oh, that's nice. I like that, Judicious. Uh, I'm Kavita from Guyana. Paula, Paula's in Brooklyn, Brooklyn in the house. I like that one. I'm going to give Paula a like. Although I like everybody else too, but Paula is from Brooklyn, so I'm going to give Paula a shout out. Okay, guys, so type in your question. If you have an immigration question, type it in, and at the end of this session, I'm going to see how many questions I can get to. By the way, I'm not providing legal advice to anyone. I'm just providing general information, okay? So just let's, let's keep that um, before us. Okay, so what am I going to talk about tonight? Okay, so here's what's happening in the world of immigration. Two weeks ago, the uh, Department of Homeland Security, the um, USCIS, right, that's the agency that processes like green card applications, naturalization applications, they deal with all the benefits, right? So that's who you go to when you apply for a green card or some immigration benefit. Trinidad and Tobago is in the house. I like folks from Trinidad. I have a good friend from Trinidad. I like... I like roti as well. Okay, so not to be distracted by food right now, guys. But two weeks ago, USCIS issued a super important um, new policy memo. Okay, it's a memorandum. Okay, it was uh, issued on June 28th. And here's what the bottom line is. It has a lot of information in here, a lot of changes, a lot of things is going down. And I'm not even going to be able to touch or address a lot of this. There's only one topic that I'm going to cover tonight, and it has to do with a change involving basically anyone who applies for a green card or to change their status or to extend their status, um, extend their stay here in the United States if they're here on a visitor's visa, like a B-1 visa or even a B-2 visa or whatever the visa is or an F-1 student visa, um, or if you're looking to adjust your status. This is impacting anyone who is applying for an immigration benefit. And they just so happen to not be in lawful status here. Meaning that, let's say for example, you come to the United States as a student. You're on an F-1 visa, okay? You're on an F-1 visa and your visa is getting, you're nearing the end of the term, right, that you're supposed to be here, and you, let's say you get, you want to get, apply to some grad program or some other program, and uh, you submit um, some sort of application to, to either extend your stay or to even change your status because let's say you want to, you got a job offer or whatever the case may be, but let's say you're not, you don't want to leave quite yet, okay, you want to extend your stay, so you submit an application of some sort to do that. Now, let's say, as many of us know, it doesn't, nothing happens overnight in the world of immigration. Things take time. It is slow. The process is super, super, super slow. So let's say while you're waiting for that new application or petition or whatever it is that you've submitted, while you're waiting for that to be approved, your F1, you know, you come to the end of your F1. And then you get a denial from USCIS. They denied. Your, your request, you will be issued a notice to appear in immigration court. You will be placed in removal, deportation. Guys, I like to break it down that way. You will be, de you will be placed in immigration court. You will be placed in deportation proceedings. And so the gist is this, if you are here and you're in an unlawful status or you're undocumented um, or your, your visa term expires or whatever the case may be and you've applied for another benefit and you're waiting and then you get a denial, the government will then issue you a notice to appear in immigration court. 
they will immediately begin deportation proceedings against you. What is wrong with this policy? Here's what's wrong with this policy. This means that more people will be tied up in immigration court. You will be tied up. Why am I saying tied up? Latoya, are you saying that I will not be free to leave the United States if they deny me for my extension of stay or to change my status? Am I gonna be held hostage in the United States of America? The land of the free, right? Am I gonna be held here? Basically, yeah, yeah. Here's what, what, what that means. So when you are issued, when the government denies you for your, your extension of stay or your adjustment of status or whatever it is you've applied for and you no longer have a lawful status here and they issue you that notice to appear in immigration court, you cannot leave and go back to, um, I see Syria's in the house, you cannot go back to Trinidad, you cannot go back to Jamaica, you can't leave, you can't go back to Poland, and you're in court, you are in proceedings. And if you were to leave, the government will bar you from returning. That's a five-year bar, actually. And it gets even deeper than that. For some people, it may even be a 10-year bar. So you're going to be messed up for a very long time, meaning that when you try to get another visa to come to the United States, this issue is going to come up that you were in proceedings before you were in removal. And you're not going to get another visa. I mean, it's going to be incredibly difficult and you'll be barred for five years, 10 years. It all depends on your on the situation. So this has serious consequences for just regular people, innocent people. So for example, if I have a client, um, let's say I have a client, a husband and wife, they're, you know, the husband is going through adjustment of status. He has applied to adjust his status, to get a green card and stay right here in the United States. He's married to a U.S. citizen um, uh, wife, right? He is her immediate relative and he has no papers. He didn't, this, this man, he, he came in 20 years ago on a visa he stayed, he overstayed, he doesn't have any lawful presence here anymore, but he's married to a U.S. citizen. You think, oh, all is well, right? All is not really well under this new change because what, what can happen is, let's say the government um, denies the adjustment of status application, they will then put him in deportation proceedings. And then I would have to defend him in immigration court because I, that's what I do. I defend people who are facing removal. I help people get adjustment of status, get their green card, get citizenship if they have a very difficult background. So I do that kind of stuff, okay? I don't just do free video. I don't do videos only. I love doing this. This is fun for me, but I do some serious work, guys. I help people to stay here, to stay. So this is a huge issue, huge. So if you, are out there and you are applying to extend your stay here in the United States, you're looking to change your status, you're looking to adjust your status, whatever it is that you're looking to do from an F1 to an H1B or whatever transitions you're trying to make here, you've got to understand that your petition, if it is denied and you no longer have a lawful status here, the government is not just going to look the other way, guys. The government is going to issue you a notice to appear in immigration court and begin removal proceedings against you, kicking you out. But the kicker is, here's the kicker. The Trump administration has this big goal of obviously deporting more people, right? Um, big goal of reducing the court's caseload because the immigration court has a huge backlog, like over 500,000 cases are pending. It's crazy. It's a huge problem. But now with this new policy, more people will be added to the system, to the docket. So it's not really going to accomplish what they really want to accomplish, guys. So this one is maybe not as smart as um, you would think. So again, the new law, and I'm going to read it from the new policy. I'm going to read it from the memo that the government issued just uh, uh, two weeks ago. It says USCIS will issue a notice to appear, that's a charging document. This is the charges that the government has against you. A notice to appear 
where upon issuance of an unfavorable decision, if you got an, a, a denial on one of your petitions or an application, right? The alien, that's you, the alien is not lawfully present here in the United States. Basically, they're going to issue a notice to appear in immigration court if they deny you and you're not here lawfully. So you've got to make sure that whatever petition you put in, whatever application you put in now, it better be done right. It better be done right. It better be done right. Because if it is not done right, you're going to be tied up in immigration court. You're going to be, you're going to have to stay here. You could leave if you want to, but if you leave, you know you're facing a five-year or even a 10-year bar from returning to the United States of America. Okay. So here are three tips that I want to give you tonight in light of this new change in our law. Tip number one, don't file your application by yourself. If you, if the beneficiary is not lawfully present in the United States, don't do it. It's a huge risk. Num tip number two, apply early. If you want to extend your stay here or if you want to change your status, be careful and apply early, guys. Apply early so that you don't run out of time. Okay, because if you do run out of time and you're unlawfully present here, the government will issue you a notice to appear in immigration court and then you're going to have to come call me and I'm glad to help you. Okay, tip number three, if there is really no reason to extend your stay here in the United States, just leave, just leave and come back when it's time when you'd like to come back. Don't, don't, it's so tempting to come here and you're like, oh my God, Times Square, oh my God, Macy's, oh my God, um, you know, it's so great here, life looks, people look happy, they look rich, we look rich here, but guys, you need to know that America is not an easy place to live, okay, especially for the immigrant, you will struggle, struggle, it's not that easy, so if you don't have a, a, a reason to stay here, just leave and come back come back so that you could avoid all this messy inadmissibility stuff down the road. So that's what I want to share with you tonight. Um, major change in our system. If you've apply, if you apply for an, uh, a change of status, extend to extend your stay, adjustment of status or whatever, any benefit you're applying for from the U S department of Homeland security from our government, um, and they deny you and you're here unlawfully or your term, your visa expired or whatever expired, you're going to be put in immigration court. And believe me, immigration court is a slow and long process. So if you don't have, if you don't want to stay in the United States beyond the time that you really should stay here, just go back. Don't, don't, it don't even sweat. It. It's not worth it. Go home and come back so that you could have that freedom of travel rather than being barred for five years, being barred for 10 years. It's not worth it. Okay, that is it, friends. That is it. So let me take a look, and I'm going to get a little closer. Get a little closer. Don't be shy, right? Okay. Hi, Sean. Hi. We went to uh, junior high together. I love Sean. Sean follows me, uh, follows my stuff. I love, um, I love the engagement. Um, unruly first lady Cassie. Hi. Okay. Let me take a look at a question here, um, to see, uh, what I can answer. Karen has a question. Okay. Karen question is very good. Good question. I'm going to answer her question. Karen says, hi, I'm married to an American citizen. Good for you, Karen. Good for you. Um, so I would like to know what is the process, please. Okay, so let me just, I'm not going to get into the entire process, but Karen is married to an American citizen. And so she is the immediate relative of a U.S. citizen. And so as an immediate relative of a U.S. citizen, she has certain major benefits that other people don't have. Okay, so if Karen is here unlawfully, um, if she is here, let's say she came in on a visa in her name and um, she overstayed her visa 
And so, uh, you know, some years go by and she's now married to an American citizen. He can petition for her and she can go through the adjustment of status process, which means that she does not need to leave the country to go back to her country and be interviewed at uh, the U.S. Embassy in her country. She can do it right here. She could adjust her status. But Karen, what I would say about that process is, and during that process, while she's waiting on the adjustment of status, Karen will get a work permit or what we call an employment authorization card um, so she can work while she's here. If Karen had, let's say Karen had worked unlawfully off the books, okay guys, if she had worked unlawfully off the books, um, the government, because the government will actually look the other way and act like it didn't even happen because she's married to a U.S. citizen, major benefit right there. Um, uh, so that's, um, that's, that's what would happen in your case, Karen. You would need to, your husband can petition for you. You can go through adjustment of status and um, you can get your work permit and the social security card. And the process is not cheap. It's an expensive process, but it is, but it is, is worth, is worth it because he is sponsoring you. And it, when your spouse sponsors you, the government um, is looking for fraud. The standard is very high. They are looking to see whether you guys have a bona fide marriage. And if you had a bona fide marriage, you prove that from day one, your intent in getting married was love. You did it for love and you wanted a long-term relationship with your spouse. Now, the government, once you're able to prove that by showing not just your marriage certificate, that doesn't matter, really. You've got to show you guys have a life together. He loves you. You love him. You share your life together. You communicate. You do things together. You commingle your resources, your finances. You have to put together a lot of evidence, Karen, to show that you guys have a true and bona fide marriage. And I love talking about that. Go to my YouTube channel. I have a couple of videos on that issue on bona fide marriage. So if, but do, Karen, let me say this, let me say this, don't do this alone because in light of what I just shared with you about being, about the new change, right? Uh, notice to appear in immigration court. If you are denied, if you have an unlawful status here, Karen, you're at a huge risk. The government can place you in removal proceedings and you're going to, it's, it's, you can be tied up. Although you can get your green card in court, you can get your green card in court. And it is not always such a bad thing to go before a human being in court and present your case and, and get your green card in court. So court is not always a bad thing, but for some people, People, yes, it is. They will be deported. Other people, they have defenses. Thanks, Karen, for that. I hope I've answered your question. Thank you very much. I like that question. Let's see who else is on. So I see Cassidy, um, Cyril. Let's see what questions uh, Cassidy has. Cassidy and Cyril has here. Um, Okay, care because Cassidy, I don't understand the question fully. It's a statement. If you want to continue, you can type in your the question, Cassidy. Cyril, let's see what you're saying here. Um, okay, so Cyril is saying, okay, let me read Cyril's question. Cyril says, um, my conditional green card, that's his two-year green card. He has a two-year green card. He says it's expiring in a cup in a few months. How long will it take to get my green card, which he means his 10-year green card, because the two-year green card, it really is a green card. I mean, by the way, it's not really, well, anyway, I won't get into what color it is and changes to it, but he has a two-year green card, and he's asking how long will it take to get his 10-year green card um, once the other green card expires. So what Cyril is going through right now is a um, major you're working with a lawyer on this because you can end up in immigration court if this isn't done right if you get a denial on your conditional on your i-751 um, that's the petition to remove conditions on your green card okay so make sure you work with a lawyer on this this is a big topic guys I can't cover it all here in this short video but what I would say about this is that 
Cyril, the timeline, it all depends. It all depends on where you are in the country. For instance, I'm here in New York. And so the New York field office has been flooded with applications and other stuff. And so they are really behind and things are taking longer these days to process. So go on USCIS's website and um, on the homepage, you can check pro case processing times. I did a video on this. Check out my video on YouTube on how to check case process and times and um, check your case status. Choose uh, the I-751 petition and then you're going to drill down to what field office where you're located and then it'll tell you how long it typically takes to process that petition. Okay, so um, it depends. I can't tell you because here's why I say I can't tell you how long it's going to take, Cyril, because you may have submitted, you may submit this petition in a couple of, in a month or so. You, it looks like you're near, you're there. You submit this, you could have done something wrong. And then the government's like, listen, we're going to issue you a request for additional evidence. We don't understand what he said here, or we need more documents. Okay, he's in Connecticut. Okay, thanks for that, Cyril. Um, so he's here on the East Coast. So the government may say to him, I want more information from you, Cyril, from you and your wife. That's if he's doing this with his wife. He should do it with his wife if they're still together. If they're sing if he's doing this on his own, that's a different process altogether. Um, but the government may slow it down by asking you questions. And certainly you guys will be going in for an interview, okay? That, that is a serious interview that you need to prepare for. You need to watch the videos on how to prepare yourself. My video on how to prepare yourself for those interviews um, because that's a very serious one. You don't want to be denied and you don't want the government to suspect that fraud is at play. I'm having so much fun. I'm beyond the 20 minutes and let me see if there's one more question that I could answer. Hi, Cassidy. Cassidy is in Milwaukee. Oh, hey, I, I lived in the Midwest for seven years. Um, spent uh, a couple of days in Green Bay, by the way. Great city. Um, okay. Okay, Cyril says he and his wife is still together. Yes, you guys should stay together for a very long time. Together, at least, yeah, stay together. That's a good thing. Okay, guys, I don't see any. I'm scrolling through to see if I see any more questions. Give me some hearts. Give me some engagement. What do you guys want to hear me talk about in the future? I'm happy to do more um, of these Facebook Live. I'm going to do another one next Monday. So uh, chime in on Monday with your question. Um, I'm scrolling through here to see if there's any other questions that I could answer. Uh, someone says free Tibet. Okay, I spent a year in China and I know that the Tibet issue is a hot one. Um, let's see. Um, Satish. Satish says, Hey, you are so knowledgeable. You are my mentor becoming a lawyer. Thanks so much for that, Satish. I appreciate it. I like that comment. I'm going to go ahead and hit like here. Guys, if you have any more questions, please um, put in your question. Put in your question, and I may answer one more. Um, if not, I will go ahead and answer your question next week. It's been great, guys. I love chatting with you. This is fun. I'm going to do more of this. If you're not on my, if you've not subscribed to my YouTube channel, believe me, that's where you need to find me because Facebook takes a long time to put my stuff in front of you. If you have not seen me in a long time, I have not gone anywhere. I every, Almost every day I'm putting stuff out there for you on Facebook. So revisit my Facebook page. Take a look at some of my uh, stuff that I put out there. But the number one thing you need to do, friends, is subscribe to my YouTube channel and get on my email list. I write emails every week from my own mind. I put it out there. I write those emails for you, and I'm teaching my people, my tribe, my community. I'm like, my people. I have people. I didn't. I have people. I guess I have people. I don't know. Uh, do you have people? But I'm teaching my community about immigration, and it's happening on my email list. My email list is awesome. I take time and I'm thinking and I'm writing and I'm sharing my knowledge with my community, my email, my smart immigration community. So get on that list. I'm going to put um, that link in this video so that you can sign up, guys. It is awesome. I mean, I read my emails over and over and over again because I love it. And I think that my community enjoys it as well. 
All right, so I'm gonna go. It's been such a pleasure. Um, Cassidy, last question, Cassidy, how long, how long does it take, how long you get your work permit after you do your biometrics? It depends. Okay, so let's, Cassidy, I'm assuming, I don't know if this is the same person from earlier, but uh, if you're doing, if you had applied for asylum or maybe even um, adjustment of status, it depends on what you had applied for, what category you had applied for. Um, but let's say it was adjustment of status. Typically, it takes about three months. In some cases, I've seen some of my clients, it takes a month. Uh, in other cases, they wait three months. Uh, three months, some people a couple of weeks that I've worked with, so it really all depends, okay? All right, so please, guys, again, share this video with your community. There's a lot of immigration fraud out there. I'm trying to teach you uh, smart and good information for free, for free, for free, okay? So enjoy it, enjoy it, guys. I enjoy doing this for you, and I'm going to get out of here. I've got to get to the gym, guys, because I work out. I've got to do a video on that for you. Got to show you what I could do in the gym. Got to show off a little, right? Guys, you have a wonderful evening, and I will see you. Watch, check me out on YouTube. Check me out um, this week on Facebook as well, and I will see you guys next week, Facebook Live, 9 o'clock on Monday night. Bye, guys.